me. But nevertheless, we're here tonight to talk about mindset for healthy living. And I think that's a really important topic to talk about um, within what's been happening for me the last couple of weeks and also just how we all go through phases and how this is a cycle for everyone. So for those who haven't met me, which you guys have here on this Zoom call, but for anyone watching this replay, my name is Simone Louise and I'm passionate about sharing my health and fitness journey. Now, this is a nice pic of me over my three pregnancies with my boys, baby one, two and three over a six year period. They're just two years apart and how I've been up and down the health scales on both ends of the spectrum and how I've bounced back after each time. Now, I don't like to say it was a quick bounce back. It certainly wasn't just a few weeks. It generally took me about six months after each of my children to get back to a uh, pre-baby weight. So within my journey of weight loss from having a shift working husband and all those sorts of things, I created a program to really fit into those people that can't get to a gym or are trying to exercise and keep fit around their family and being at home as well. And that was the birth of my Fit for Life program. Now, within our last lockdown, I kind of sat back and thought, why do people really struggle with their health and fitness so much? Why is it so hard? If it, if it was so easy as just eating healthy and exercising, then we should all be fit and healthy. So why are people struggling with this so much? And I actually started writing down all the things that I do, all the little micro habits that I've created that allows me to eat well and exercise. And I built that into a digital course. So that launched in January and these webinars are generally, a, it's a snippet of what's behind the scenes inside of that course and in my Fit for Life program. So the last couple of weeks we've been focusing on exercise and that has only been for my live audience. So if you missed out, you would have seen that there hasn't been too many recordings coming out uh, of the lives from the last couple of weeks. And that's why, because we've actually just been having more in-depth conversations about exercise. So tonight we're here to talk about mindset. And I love this visual because it really explains that your mindset is key and pivotal to so many things, whether that be your behavior, your actions, the result of those actions, how you are performing, and the attitude that you have that allows you through this. So here's a quick mindset checklist for you to tick some things off to go, I don't, do I have a healthy mindset? How do I improve my mindset? Here's some things that can really help you along your journey to improving your emotional well-being. Now, things like exercising, journaling and practicing gratitude, finding a quiet spot to do some meditation, preparing healthy meals for yourself and your family, practicing deep breathing techniques, connecting with your friends and family, eating mindfully away from screens and devices, visualizing your goals personally and professionally, surrounding yourself with the right people, spending quality time with your family, listening to good music, stretching and unwinding your body, getting quality sleep, breaking down the housework into smaller tasks, spending time outdoors, having a mini pamper session, drinking more water and trying something new. So that is just a nice big list of things that you can do that not only helps you physically, but also with your mindset as well. Now, as I've shared with many people before, exercise is a tool I use for my emotional well-being. When I exercise, it just resets my mindset. It just makes me feel good. Now, that's not for everyone. Not everyone has those same triggers. And that's why you can find these that same moment within anything in this list. I know particularly for music, that can definitely change my mood and mindset. My husband actually really likes heavy metal music and I cannot stand it. It just actually puts me in a bad mood. I just don't like it. So there's small things that you can adjust or be more mindful of each day that will improve your mindset overall. Now, when it comes to physical strength, we just feel or, or sometimes we can just often think about that we need to be active to, you know, reduce our weight or our risk of diabetes, heart disease, all those things that we know that if we look after our body physically, we'll see improvements. 
But in actual fact, it's the running around of day-to-day -day tasks that really require you to be healthy, both physically and emotionally. You know, uh, we're all guilty of trying to carry every single shopping bag into the house at once so we don't have to make two trips or lifting a heavy load of washing that's putting strain on your hips and your back. All of these fundamental things we do within our everyday life, we can improve the impact, how that takes a toll in our body with physical strength. And that's doing a mixture of exercise. That's not just prescribing doing weights all the time or running all the time. It really is having a balance of everything and anything. And the key is, is that you enjoy it and it makes you happy. Because when you enjoy what you're doing, you're more likely to keep doing it instead of just going, no, this is something I'm not going to do anymore. You know, I'm not into it or, or you just move on past it. Now, I like to talk about emotional strength as well. And I think this is something that doesn't get enough airtime on social media. I know we're getting a lot more talk about mental health and well-being in the workplace, but I still feel that there's so much work to be done. So your mental strength helps you manage your thoughts, regulate your emotions and behave productively. And that really means that you can focus and energize on the things that matter most. Now, I really love this visual as well because it reminds me of uh, that saying, walking on eggshells. And, you know, that's something we all kind of grew up with hearing. And it is really, really true. Like our mindset is fragile like an egg. We can certainly strengthen it by doing these exercises exercises and doing our internal work that we need to do. But for the most part, we really just need to be careful and be mindful of what we're doing with our emotional health. Now, I want to talk about motivation because this is really important in your mindset. And I think it's really important to also note that motivation isn't something that just switches on. It does to the tiniest minute to get started. And that is the most important point, right? You just need to start. And the momentum and the motivation builds from there. We very rarely start with a motivation tank that's 100%. Normally, it's just getting that first 10% to take that risk, to put yourself out of your comfort zone, and your motivation will build momentum. And that's what keeps you going. And that's what really helps you to develop long standing healthy habits. And motivation is a great way to drive you to that success. Think about how you're motivated to lose weight or how the greater the success you can have when your motivation builds onto that momentum. It also really helps with your productivity, the quality and the speed of which you're achieving your girls, uh, goals, as well as your overall satisfaction and the happiness along the way. And I often say this to people as well. There is no end line with your health and fitness journey. You can have those micro goals or even longer term goals, say if you wanted to lose 20 kilos or 30 kilos if you're quite overweight. It doesn't stop once you get to that goal and you lose weight. There needs to be another goal continuously to strive towards a healthier lifestyle. No final destination to just switch it off and go, okay, the end, I'm done now. You need to keep working at it and refocusing on it to keep that momentum and to motivate you in different ways. I found this particularly challenging when I actually, I didn't care about the weight anymore on the scales, when I'd felt like I had, I had achieved that goal of that number I wanted on the scale or it just didn't particularly drive me anymore to need that number. And I recall speaking to one of my mentors about this and just saying, well, what now? What do I actually strive for? And they said, well, pick you know, because I love exercise, pick something that you want to challenge yourself to achieve. And that was a handstand against the wall and doing those sorts of things, things I haven't done since I was a kid. So I was 
you know, challenging myself with different fitness techniques outside of weight loss to still drive me to want to push myself and to strive for something more that wasn't just weight focus. So I think that's really important. It's often where we start with wanting to have a weight loss driven goal, uh, but there's so many more things that can drive into a healthy, happier lifestyle routine. So how do you really create that motivation? What really drives you for that? And it is my belief that to really create goals and values that are deep, that really mean something to you. I mean, when you set them, you can really feel it in your heart. It makes you feel emotional um, and it's really pulling on your heartstrings. That's how you know that you have set a goal that truly means something to you. And when you do that, that is when that motivation will help you on those days as well. So, you know, we're coming into winter. It's going to start getting more difficult to get up in the morning. Our doona is beautifully warm. It is icy cold outside. So to get up earlier to do your exercise or to do your meditation or whatever your morning routine is, I can feel a little bit more challenging to do that. So having very focused goals and aligned goals will really help you with your motivation. So the real benefit of having your goals is it builds your self-confidence. It increases your productivity. It helps you focus. It gives you motivation to succeed and it provides the ability to be more informed to make those decisions. So when you're sitting there trying to make the choice of whether you're going to have soup for lunch or eat a burger, when you can sit back and go, you know what, my goal is really to eat healthier and perhaps reduce carbohydrates or maybe you're going gluten-free or something like that. When you know what your goal is, you can make a decision based on that goal. You can make an informed decision to choose whether you're going to keep chasing that goal or you choose not to. So we're always making choices and we always have the choice. Even if it's the choice not to make a choice, that is the choice, okay? So really understanding what your goals are, what aligns for you and what you want to achieve really does make a huge difference. So your goals really guide your focus. And I love this quote that is, whatever the mind believes, the body achieves. And it's so true. It starts in your head. It starts in your mind. That is where the first decision comes from. You don't just all of a sudden start eating salads and, and, you know, not eating the chips and the lollies anymore. Your mind tells you that it doesn't want to do that anymore. It wants to make a different decision. Don't just mindlessly wake up and go, I'm going to exercise. You make an informed choice to set your alarm clock, to lay out your workout clothes and to get up and get it done. So everything is driven by your mind before your body takes action. And that is why it's so important to have a healthy mindset. So how are some ways that you can really dig into your goals and how you can really work out what they are? Because sometimes it's really hard to know what you want to achieve. If you're not if you're not sure what your goal would want to ha- what what you would want your goal to be, a great uh, tip that I have for you tonight is to actually do a brain session, brainstorming session, a mind dump session with yourself. Now you can do this in multiple ways. You can either do it after a meditation, take a few minutes just to sit, close your eyes, breathe, and start thinking about these three words: What do I want to be? What do I want to do? What do I want to have? Be, do, have. And just keep asking yourself those questions. And as things come into your mind, just write them down. Write them down exactly how they come out of your mind. Don't filter them. Don't edit them. Your ideas, let them just flow straight to that paper. 
I prefer pen and paper. If you really want to, you can use your device if you want to write your notes in your phone or if you've got your iPad or something like that. But I think there's nothing better than a pen and paper when it comes to these types of things. So brainstorm out. What are my goals? Why do I want to achieve them? And that moves into the next part of crunching the why. So once you've got your list of goals, say you want to lose 10 kilos, you want to fit into a particular dress for summer, or you want to feel comfortable in your swimsuit when it gets warmer again, whatever your goal actually is. The next phase of that, and this is where it is crucial, is to understand why. Why do you want that goal? Why is it important for you to achieve that goal? Now, this is the real key thing and what most people miss from the process. So, yep, have SMART goals. We all know the framework or keep it simple. We all know those tools to use when it comes to setting a goal, making it measurable, attain attainable, time-bound, blah, 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 all that stuff. That's nothing new. But really asking yourself why, why do I care about losing weight? Or why do I care about feeling healthier? And challenge yourself to come up with those answers because they are really the answers that will drive you on the mornings where the motivation is lacking. When the warm doona is more appealing than the alarm clock going off. When the piece of pizza is more appealing than eating the salad for lunch. When you are really thinking about why it's important to you, that's when you can find that true value of just switching your mindset, just hitting that refresh button to go, okay, no, I can do this. I really do want that goal. I really do want to achieve that outcome. And this is the choice I'm going to make. Now, sometimes you'll make the choice not to follow that goal for the day or something like that. And that's totally okay. We're all human. We never stick to anything 100%. We all fall off the wagon. That is totally normal. But the whole point of that is, is getting back on. And when you understand your why and when you're clear on your goals, it's easy to jump back on when you can at the next available moment. Now, another really important part of the whole process of your mindset of refining your goals, of really being clear on your why, is to think about the reflection. Think about how you've turned up. And I like to do this over a monthly period. And I think that's a, a good amount of time frame to see how you've gone over the past four or five weeks and how, how you've shown up for yourself. And I believe that doing this exercise month over month, it increases the quality of your goals, your results, but most importantly, it leads to better self-awareness. And when we are aware of what's happening in our mind, that's when we can actively make the choices to improve it as well. So I've shared this with you guys before. This is my wheel of life and the personal quadrants of what I reflect on each month. How did I show up with my energy, my contribution to my community or to my team? How did I have fun? How was I social? How did I learn? How was my mindset? How were my relationships? How was my money? How was my food and my exercise? Now you can change these areas into anything that you feel is more relevant for you. These are the ones that I truly value. And this is what I reflect on. So we've done this in a different lesson and this is part of my course as well is really is really looking down how you evaluate and assess that. But essentially what I like to explain to people is I think of this as the wheel on my cart, okay? This is the wheel on my cart. Now, when all of these pieces of the pie, pieces of the pizza, whatever you want to call them, quadrants of the wheel, when all of these are filled to the top all the way to the outer rim of the circle, my cart's going smooth. I'm just rolling down the road and everything is happy days. Now, I have actually never got to the point where every single one of these things in my quadrant is a 10. Haven't got there. I keep chasing it and I know I will get there one day. So for me, it's a really important tool to be able to sit back and go, okay, geez, my food wasn't very good this month. 
why was that, Simone? What happened for you there? Well, maybe I went on holidays and, you know, I just took a little bit, bit of time off healthy eating, had some cocktails with my friends, had some few too many cheese platters, whatever it is. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing, but it's a self-evaluation of going, okay, well, that was fun. Now we need to get back onto what we're doing. Well, what, uh, was your energy really low? Was I not feeling at this you know, month, what was going on for me? I actually, I'm just a bit overwhelmed because studying a new course, started a new relationship, you know, I was just all over the place. So it's really just talking yourself through the things that are most important to you and reflecting on where you can improve. And on the other side of that, it's reflecting on what was really good because it's easy for us to focus on the negatives. And we all do that really quite well. But when we focus on the things that are going well in our lives, what is really making me happy, that is a way to actually multiply that and repeat that month on month. So we don't always just look at everything from a negative mindset, but what was working really well for me and let's replicate that and let's make sure I'm doing that next month as well. So a few different ways that I can help you with these tasks at hand if you do want a little bit more information. I offer a 15-minute free strategy call. You're welcome to jump on a Zoom or a phone chat with me and I can really help you get some clarity on the exact challenges that you need to overcome to optimize your health and body this year. Now, sometimes it's really easy just to get caught up into our own moment and we think we know what's best for us, but then we reflect and we're like, oh, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm just not hitting these milestones that I want to hit. So sometimes it just takes someone to bounce that ideas off you or just kind of question something in a bit of a different way. And that can really just make the difference for you to get on the right track and get started. So during the calls, these are really fast paced. We go through your lifestyle, your schedule, your goals, your challenges, and see what's really possible for you in the next 90 days. And we work, we talk about 90 days because that's a nice time frame for real short-term goals. I know when people talk about weight loss, they like to think that, you know, a week or two weeks is sufficient to talk about weight loss. To really start building on healthy habits, you need to give yourself a good 90-day window, which is three months. Months. So we'll dive into your schedule and see what's happening each week. Where is there room? Because a lot of people just feel like they never have time. Now, when we really dig into someone's schedule, it's easy to find where the gaps are and where the time wasters are. So all you need to do is actually look on your phone to see how often you're spending on your device, on social media platforms and things like that. And you can really find, I tell you, you will 100% find the time to do some of these tasks. Now, I, I recommend exercising 30 minutes to 45 minutes per day. You don't need to spend two hours in a gym. If you're doing journaling or something like that, you don't need to go and start writing your own book. It could be half a page. That's five, 10 minutes. You don't need long periods of time to get these things to happen. But sometimes it's just someone to sort of flick that light switch and make it start rolling. And that's what happens in these calls. So it's just really helping you work out what's your priority and what are the key tasks that will get you moving and get you started on your journey. And then we tie it all together and I'll give you some recommendations to stay one step ahead of what is happening in your life so you can really keep executing without any excuses because most of the time that's what the barriers are it's just our mindset and our excuses so to make that healthy lifestyle stick for long-term benefits which is what I am all about you really need discipline and structure and that comes with your motivation and your mindset as well. And creating those things will just really allow you to feel clearer, more confident, more excited about what your future body and health goals are. So I always like to finish these webinars on a quote, and that is just to really fuel your desires with passion and purpose, and you will be unstoppable. A lot of people ask me all the time, how do you do it? How do you live your life? as busy as you are and achieve the outcomes that you do. And my, my response to that is I'm very clear on what I want to achieve. I'm very clear on what my goals are. And that keeps me going. That keeps my motivation up. Of course, I have days where I am not motivated. And as you may have noticed the last few weeks, 
my motivation has definitely dropped in terms of my business aspirations and just showing up on social media and those sorts of things. My motivation really dropped. However, my discipline never did. So that is the second part component. Motivation will wave. It comes in waves. But my discipline is very fixed and very routine. I've still been getting up every day at 4.45, Monday to Friday. That's what time I get up. And I still do what I do. I still exercise every day. I still drink my water, all of those types of things, because that is my discipline to do that. So when motivation waves, it can sort of slow your progress. And that's exactly what's happened to me over the past few weeks. But the discipline never goes because I've been doing these habits for such a long time now that it is just intrinsic. It's as automatic to me as making a cup of tea, as, you know, sitting down and and brushing your teeth or any of those things that you do without thinking. That's what my morning routine is when I just, the alarm goes off, I get up, I get dressed, I drink my one liter of water. I do an hour of focus, whether that is on my business or if it's something else, I continue to keep that focus going the whole time and that keeps my discipline going and everything else. So I hope you really enjoyed the information I shared with you tonight. I can see Donna's just popping in now. I'm going to stop screen sharing and just offer anyone the opportunity. If you'd like to ask any questions, 